the rise of the worst and most dangerous enemy freedom has ever seen since Adolf Hitler died in 1945. How could you not understand what's at stake here? If you have children, don't you wake up in the morning and wonder if they'll even live in freedom if they're, or if they'll wind up praying to Mecca six times a day at this rate? Is that what you want? You want your daughter to walk around in a burqa, bowing down to Mecca? You want to see your husband's head cut off? You say, oh, it can't happen. That's stu stupid. That's, that's alarmist. That's hysterical alarmism. Well, it would be if you, didn't, if, if you don't know history, that sounds like alarmism. But those of you who studied history know that there is certainly a possibility that we not only have lost this war so far, but we could lose the big war if we don't change course rapidly. And the best example of what I'm saying is the truth of what happened. In 25 years, from the time of the death of Muhammad in 632, until the death of his descendant, Othman, in 656, in only 25 years, you will see one of the most amazing stories of conquest in the whole history of the human race. And it was done exactly then the way it's being done now. Only, in fact, it's escalated now because then they didn't even have TNT. They used swords, and they used burning. They used beheading. They used rape. They pillaged, they burned, and they raped. And they terrified one town and one city and one village after another. And they smashed the Byzantine army at the Battle of Yarmouk in 634. And then they conquered Persia, conquered Syria, conquered Damascus, Palmyra, Antioch, Jerusalem. These towns and villages and cities fell almost without resistance to the Muslim hordes. What happened after that was large elements of the population were converted to Islam. And then the Muslim hordes turned east. The Persians, who are now Muslims, uh, eventually fell. And they fell because even though they had a great force of elephants, and even though they fought the Arabs with great courage, they lost in 637, and the conquest of all of Persia then followed. And then the Muslim Empire spread even further, pushing farther into western Turkestan. Now, let's pause on Turkestan for a minute. Turkestan was in the news last week when Turkmen allegedly shot down that Russian plane. Well, Turkmen are really another name for Obama's moderate terrorists. But then Turkestan fell, and then it met the Chinese. The Muslims went all the way into China. And a portion of China fell to Islam. Did you know Egypt was not Muslim? But it fell to the Muslim hordes as a result of what? Beheadings, burnings, pillagings, and rapings. And Egypt then became Muslim. And Egypt then became Muslim and fell into a fanatical belief in the sufficiency of the Quran. And what happened next is astonishing. The Muslims wiped out the vestiges of the book copying industry of the Alexandria Library. And then they poured along the north coast of Africa to the Straits of Gibraltar and Spain. The Muslims invaded Spain in 710. And they breached the Pyrenees Mountains in 720. In 732, the Arab advance reached the center of France. But then something happened. The Battle of Poitiers happened. And the leaders of France put on armor instead of hiring, hiding in armored cars. They put on armor themselves, and they led the charge against these hordes, these barbarian hordes. And they pushed the Muslim barbarians back into the Pyrenees again. And it goes on and on. 25 years through the same tactics that are being used today, the ancients who, who duplicate what ISIS is doing today, without the benefit of the destructive elements of TNT, and the weapons of today, they were able to do this in 25 years. Unless we get a true world leader, worse will happen in your lifetime. Take that to the bank, because what I just read to you is the history of the world in real time. I'll be back in a minute on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O. 
So this deranged administration is sending 50 special ops troops to Syria without any military backup. So what's the real purpose here? What is he trying to do? People are speculating. One person says, well, they're probably sending in the special ops to say that Syria has and has used weapons of mass destruction. And this proves that we need to eliminate Assad. And then, of course, we're at war with Russia. And then, of course, Halliburton and the military-industrial congressional complex uh, is in business again. That's what someone wrote. Another one says, what's the real purpose of doing this? To prevent the Syrian government from retaking the entire country from the cannibalistic Islamic terrorists. It is clear that Syria, with Russian help, will regain total control of all Syria unless U.S. troops and NATO are on the ground to stop them. Just giving you a few additional things to think about instead of buying the lies that your newspapers will publish tomorrow. KSFO Ben, 30 seconds or less, fire away. Hey, Mike, um, and I disagree with you. I, I don't think there's going to be an escalation of uh, military forces uh, um, and Russians uh, to, to instigate a, a greater conflict. Um, I, I think there's a lot of... But wait, sir, yeah. well, what, are 50, what are 50 troops going to be able to do against 35,000? Well, Mike, the, the wars that fought today is not like uh, John Wayne back in... Uh, Green Beret movies. It's it's not like that nowadays. Oh no, it isn't. Tell me what it's like. Well, uh, more uh, um, drone strikes, more uh, remote operated. Uh, really? How, how's that working out so far? Have they lost or, re or gained territory with our advanced technology? Use the might, just like you had said in the past. The problem is. Wait, wait no. I'm saying you 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 seem to think that we have drones and technology, and it's all so great that we don't need troops. How has that worked out since they've now expanded to a territory the size of Great Britain? Mike, the 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 U.S. military has um, the firepower to wipe out all of Syria. The thing is, it's not being used. I mean, it, it would... Well, now you're agreeing with me. That's right. So either you want to wipe out ISIS or you don't. But you don't send in 50 men like sacrificial lambs. Mike. That's my point, Ben. That's all. They're putting them at, at, at risk. It's that simple. WMAL, Mark, you're next up. Fire away 30 seconds or less. Hey, Dr. Savage, I just want to echo what you're saying. Uh, I was a Marine for 20 years and did special ops, and special ops is always attached to a battalion-sized unit or more. Special ops is designed to drop in behind enemy lines, gather reconnaissance, or do an extraction or something of that nature. But, you know, something that's just asinine, to try and um, turn... Mark, turn. listen, I'm not a military person, but I read military history, and I have common sense, and I know this is not done. Nobody does this but a liar like Obama. He's sacrificing them. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. It, it has just, as he sacri just as somebody in the Defense Department or in State Department or in the White House itself sacrificed all those members of SEAL Team 6 who were killed on that helicopter under suspicious circumstances, nobody has been found and punished for that. The same thing is liable to happen here. Yes, you're absolutely correct. There's no way that, that you can put 50 people in against... 35,000 and expect anything. They're only there to gather intelligence. Or Mark, I want to ask you something. In your experience, when you said they're usually backed up by a brigade, tell the audience how large a brigade is. Well, you're going to have to have at least 1,500 people. You're going to have to have people that are involved in communications, radio communications. You have to have hero ops. You're, you're going to have to have a, a, a CENTCOM uh, trace. You're going to have to have people that, that, that report to a higher authority. And, you know, hope is not a strategy. And it sounds like they're just dropping these guys in there and hoping something good's going to happen. It's, it's, it's just ridiculous. All right, I'm sending you government zero because the chapter called Zero Military and Zero Strategy Against ISIS was never more true than it is today. These people are dangerous to our survival, and on the front lines are these 50 men whose lives are in grave danger because they're being dropped behind enemy lines without any support whatsoever. This is classic stupidity by a community organizer, my opinion. We have only 55 seconds left in this hour. They're putting special ops teams on the ground. 
without any support from a regular army brigade. They're announcing in advance that they're dropping them. I'm afraid I'll wake up tomorrow morning and see that this pink-tied Ash Carter will tell the enemy exactly which province they're being put into, on what day they will be landing, and what the coordinates are of the transport planes that will be bringing them in. This is what I fear. Let's pray that I'm wrong. Let's pray that we wake up tomorrow 